Good morning, and welcome to another Crosspoint Southern Baptist Church online Bible study. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Jim Hillier, and as most of you know, Crosspoint has been serving our shut in and vacationing members for over three years by live streaming our Sunday morning services and some special events on YouTube. Uh, now it's our pleasure to also be able to offer an online Bible study. Uh, we use the same material in this Bible study online as we do in our uh, Sunday school classes when we're able to, uh, to get together uh, at the church in person. That material is, uh, I'll bring it up here for you, that material is uh, the Explore the Bible series uh, by a company called Lifeway. And uh, uh, it comes out uh, every uh, three months, uh, hence quarterly, uh, as a magazine style series pr produced again by a company called Lifeway and it's Explore the Bible. Uh, this is available online at uh, www.lifeway.com slash explore the Bible if you'd like to have your own hard copy of it. Uh, they also offer it uh, uh, as a uh, downloadable PDF, uh, very reasonably priced. Uh, you can download this and have your take your Bible study materials uh, with you anywhere you want. You put it on your uh, phone, your, your tablet, your iPad, uh, your cloud drive, so you can access it from any computer anywhere. Um, one of the things that I really, really love about this series is that at the beginning of each book, there is a reading plan that will walk you through uh, all of the, the scriptures that are, that are covered in uh, that quarterly. Each quarter, uh, the, uh, the, the books of the Bible change that are being covered. Usually there's one book, sometimes two if the, if the books are short. Like, uh, for instance, this current one that we're in, the uh, summer series for 2020, uh, we're looking at Proverbs and Song of Songs. And while uh, the, uh, the weekly study materials don't go uh, verse by verse, they, we, they, they, they skip topically. Uh, obviously, there's, there's more verses than uh, can be covered necessarily in, uh, uh, in uh, the series of Sundays uh, in a three month period. But out here in the front, they, uh, they've got the all of the scriptures grouped, sometimes it's uh, four or five, sometimes it's 10 or 12 verses a day. And uh, you check them off as you go. Uh, I, I like to do it the first thing in the morning and I keep, the, uh, keep a notepad uh, there with uh, the Sunday school book and my Bible. And uh, each morning I, I read that scripture and I make some notes as far as uh, uh, how does, uh, how does the, the scripture that uh, was pointed out that morning, how does it apply to my life? How can I use it? And uh, uh, it's, it's just a really good way to, uh, to get into the word. So this week we are in, uh, uh, we're at the August 1st, or actually it's this August 2nd, 2020 uh, session. It's session number nine, if you're following along uh, in the book or, or online. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 23, verses 17 through 21 and verses 29 through 35. Uh, this session, again, we, it's about staying sober in it, and it, it's broader than, uh, you know, one might originally think, you know, the concept of staying sober uh, you know, years ago, sober solely meant uh, uh, alcohol ad addiction, whereas, you know, as time has uh, gone on, you know, it, it, it uh, starts getting into uh, uh, drug abuse, uh, substance abuse of any kind. But this actually even expands beyond that in, in uh, the concept of staying sober, being, uh, being of sober mind and uh, not, uh, not wrapped up in, in addiction of any kind. So join with me in prayer as we get started this morning and we'll get into uh, this week's lesson. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you and we praise you. Uh, thank you for the, the word that you give us, uh, for the, uh, the knowledge that you bestowed upon Solomon 
and that Solomon would uh, would, would in turn uh, document this in the, in the scriptures, and that uh, so that that we uh, you know 3,500 years later can learn and and see that that the the problems of the world aren't anything new. Uh, they're they've been there since we've been here, and uh, the uh, the solution has also not changed. The solution is in you. So as we look into the word this week uh, around staying sober, looking at uh, uh, in the book of Proverbs, we just ask that you would open hearts and minds this week and uh, that you would, uh, as your word goes forth, that it would touch someone at some point, uh, uh, either listening to this uh, immediately or, or sometime in the future. Uh, Father, we know that it's not for us to, to necessarily know the outcome when we share your word, but uh, uh, that your word will not return void. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. So, getting into, uh, getting into our scripture for this week, as we, uh, let me move over here. Um, again, we are, we're talking about uh, being sober, staying sober, getting sober, uh, and, and having a sober mind, having a sober attitude. God expects uh, believers to be good stewards of, uh, of what he gives us, both in the material world and, and in our body. Um, now, I, I have to admit, this lesson became a little bit personal to me, and, uh, and I, as, as, as they often do. Uh, I'm a big guy. I'm uh, 6'1", 300 pounds. And uh, so there's, and I, and I like to eat. <laughs> um, I, I tend to, uh, um, I tend, I, I try not to overeat. I try not to overindulge, but, but uh, I find myself, I sometimes do. And uh, so one of the things that, that we looked at in this, uh, in this study this week is the fact that uh, not only are we to be good stewards when it comes to addiction to things like alcohol or controlled substances, food is just as addicting. And it's just as much of a sin to sit down and and uh, and eat an entire loaf of bread and uh, and a jar of peanut butter and a jar of jelly, all in one sitting. And that is just as much of a sin as it is uh, to uh, to go out and and buy, buy a, a bottle of Jack and down it in and uh, and go staggering out into the into the night. Uh, it's it's still it, it's an abuse. And we, we could actually, in, technically, we could take it even further than that abuse of anything, whether it's uh, uh, food or alcohol or, uh, or shopping. You know, if, you, if it is something that you are addicted to and that, uh, that you just can't seem to live without, if it's something that you you have to go shop, you have to go buy that book, you have to go do this, you know, psychologically, they refer to that as addiction, but it, or, or as, uh, as, as it could be referred to as sometimes as, as OCD, but it's an addiction. It's an addiction. It's, it's, it is obsessive, it is compulsive, and it is a disorder, but it's an addiction. You're addicted to spending money. You're addicted to alcohol. You're addicted to, to substances. You're addicted to food. You know, it's something, an addiction is something that when you do it, when you partake of it, that it, it makes you feel better for a short time. And that's what we're going to talk about today is that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's such an issue. And uh, in, our, in our material, it, it says, you know, it, it, it's... Uh, Alcohol and drug abuse have uh, have become such a, a feature of our lands of our cultural landscape, but it, it's not fair to say that it's become it. It was this way. The Book of Psalms was written some thirty five hundred years ago. Solomon recognized the problem that uh, the nation of Israel was having with alcohol, and and it was a serious problem. They were they were party harders. And Solomon was saying, look, 
you're you're abusing this you're going too far so again we're going to be looking at proverbs chapter 23 uh, verses 17 to 21 and then we're going to skip on down into uh, into the chapter just a little bit and we're going to look at verses 29 to 35. Uh, we overall it's uh, it's going to be 12 verses as as usual these are these are very short uh, but they're very deep at the same time <coughs> excuse me so as we go through this i, w- I want you to kind of think about what factors contribute to uh, uh to most uh, to alcohol and drug abuse and um and think about you know can somebody be a social or recreational user and not be an abuser and and what that what that would look like and i uh, i have to tell you right now i many many years ago i spent a number of years uh, where i was never sober i would i would drink after work i would stop at, at the bar and i would spend the evening drinking and i would go home fall into the bed get up the next morning get ready go to work not not actually i I never got hung over because i never i never i never was was not drinking uh you know i'd get up in the morning i would put uh uh, put a little something in my coffee i'd make it through the day and uh as soon as i got off work it was all i could do to wait to get to to, to get back to the bar to, uh, to, to start drinking again. And I, I realized uh, uh, through, through uh, a friend of mine that I did have an issue and, uh, and, I, and I walked away from it. It was hard walking away from it because at the same time, um, you know, it's, it, you're not just walking away from the alcohol, but a lot of times you're walking away from the association, from the friends, from the people that you know. And the, so, so the concept of, of being a social drinker, to me, um, you may have an occasional drink and that would be okay. You know, if it doesn't rule your life and it doesn't ruin your life, okay. Um, when it becomes, when social drinking reaches a point where uh, every social event you have to, it has to involve alcohol now you're starting to get on the edge of a problem when you reach that point where in order to be social you have to have a drink you think you have to have a drink in your hand in order to be social you're getting deeper into a problem and when you reach that point where social is all about drinking you have a problem and you've crossed that line and it's very easy to do addiction addiction is a tricky thing addiction is is uh, uh, to me addiction is the uh, the best description of Satan because Satan comes as a serpent a serpent sneaks up on you just like alcohol does just like controlled substances do And I'm talking, when I talk controlled substance, folks, I'm also talking marijuana. I know a lot of states have legalized it, mine included. It is, however, it is a drug. And I, sorry, don't post any, any, oh, butts or, or weeds harmless. It's not because I went down that path too earlier in my life. I went down that path and weed is, is i guarantee you is a gateway drug because just like alcohol you you drink and it makes you feel good you drink a little bit more it makes you feel a little bit better so now you 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 you, you drink a little bit more and more and more and you keep feeling better and better and better and then it then it starts taking more for the drink to make you feel better And at that point you have a definite problem same thing with the same thing with marijuana you you get high you smoke a little you 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 know you smoke a little joint smoke a little uh you know smoke a little pipe 
little bong, uh, you know, a little one hitter. You got that little one hitter in your pocket and you hit that every once in a while. Over time, that that little quick little hit is quite enough. So you, you, you do the one hitter and then you know a few minutes later you're doing the one hitter again. And then next thing you know, okay, well, you know, the one hitter is just not cutting and I need I need a little bit more. And a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And it, and the money, and by the way, all the all this time, whether it's uh, drugs or alcohol, the money all this time is, is trickling out, the, out of your pocket. You're pouring something in this end or, or putting something in this end and the, and the money's trickling out of the pocket at the same time. So you get to that point where you need more. Well, you can only smoke so much weed. So, well, what else? What else? How else can I get this feeling? Oh, well, then there's this. And then, there, then there's the pain pills. And then there's the, you know, the, uh, the, the oxy. And, oh, you know, hey, somebody's got some oxy patches. And, uh, you know, folks, addiction is literally one activity away. And it's and, and the same thing goes for same thing goes. I'll get off the I'll get off the alcohol and drugs uh, for here for a minute. Same thing goes with food. If you're if you're an obsessive overeater, if you're if you eat because you're depressed, if you're what they call a depression eater, it's the same thing. You're constantly eating. You constantly have to have a little bit of something to make you feel better, and then and then well that's not quite enough. So you start eating even more, and then now now you you know now the poundage is coming on, and again the money is trickling out the door. Uh, or if it's shopping, if it's buying certain things, you know, some people have uh, or have OCD around around uh, certain books or certain uh, things. Uh, this you know that, that if 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 it's there, they have to buy it, and if they if it's if they don't see it, then they have to go find it. Um, so, but as we as we get into the scripture, now keep keeping that in mind, Solomon. You know, early early in uh, in in Proverbs, uh, he had you know he talked about the wisdom of God and and how uh, the wisdom of God is revealed, and the wisdom of God is soul searching. The wisdom of God is intensely practical, and it's relational. So, starting off in our first verse is the promise. In, Proverbs chapter 23, verses 17 and 18. It says, Don't let your heart envy sinners. Instead, always fear the Lord, for then you will have a future and your hope will not be dashed. Now notice there, as we've we've seen we've seen Solomon say before, not to envy sinners. Yeah. But instead fear the Lord. Well, that 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 envy that that's actually very easy to fall into because you know it's like well they're having a really good time you know they're they've got this that or the other thing or they you know because they've done this and and it can you know it could be uh, you know it, it can be investing you ever think about that 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 what some people consider planning for their future and and uh, and being prepared and preparing for the future it becomes obsessive and they're in their investing and next thing you know every penny that comes in is going into investments that are on the edge and 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 the more on the edge that investment is the more the more exciting it is and the more enticing it is and then they lose it all and but here we're told don't envy them instead always fear the lord and then, and as we've talked before fear fear in the old testament uh, does not mean to be in trepidation of of the Lord or to be to be scared of the Lord but th that He's going to do something to you. Fear, as it's translated, as it what it means is to respect and honor and cherish. And then it says, "For then you will have a future, and your hope will not be dashed." That that guy that I was talking about with the uh, with the investments, you know, it's, uh, eventually, 
you know, he might get lucky and he might be, you know, he, he might have, he might have bought Microsoft, uh, you know, when it, when it was, uh, when it was a penny stock, <laughs> uh, you know, he might have bought into Apple when, uh, when Steve Jobs uh, was, was, was still working out of his garage. Uh, but at the same time, you know, he might have, he might have bought DeLorean <laughs> when, when it was already high and, and, you know, at the, at the upper end before it, uh, before it went away, or he might've just made some really good investments and then went through 2000, 2008 <laughs> and, uh, and that crash. But the key is, you know, when you hope in and you trust in and you have reverence for things of the world, your hopes will be dashed. If you, when you, when you trust in someone or you trust in something, uh, that, that future hope, people will let you down. I guarantee it. It's what we do. And even Christians, we will let you, pastors will let you down. Sunday school teachers will let you down. I will let you down. And I guarantee you somewhere in your life, you will let someone down. The only one that doesn't let us down is God. And so by, by having our, that, that, keeping that fear and that reverence for the Lord at, at the forefront of our lives, our hopes in him won't be dashed because he's not gonna let us down. He's going to take care of us and he's going to fulfill the promises that he has given us from the very beginning. And we're, we're enticed, you know, we're, we're, we're encouraged to, uh, to, to, to keep that, that sober mind, if you will. So the next, the next verses, verses 19 through 21 of uh, Proverbs 23, is all about the petition. And here Solomon says, listen, my son, and be wise. Keep your mind on the right course. Don't associate with those who drink too much wine or those who gorge themselves on meat. For a drunkard and the glutton will become poor, and grogginess will clothe them in rags. Man, I'll tell you what, how many times have you woke up in the morning groggy? Whether it's whether it's you know, whether it's just from a bad night's sleep or because because you overdid it the night before. You, you partied a little too much. Uh, you know, grogginess is, is one of the, the results. And Solomon is encouraging the young men of Israel uh, to, to keep their mind on the right course, be, stay clear headed. Uh, it means thinking on the processes of, of, of God's people and, and, and how and what a person thinks when it comes to critical junctures in life makes all the difference. And a sound mind filled with the wisdom of God will be better able to make the right choices and avoid the bad choices and, and deal with the everything in between. You know, just he he's, he wants them to be clear headed. And he's saying, you know, don't associate with those who drink too much wine or, or they gorge themselves because you know, both alcohol and food and food can be uh, can be a medicine uh, to uh, to those that are struggling with depression or uh, whether it's depression or loneliness or, or just low self esteem or whatever. But he stresses, don't associate with them. One of the thing, one of the hardest things to give up in an addiction, in an addictive situation, is to give up those around you that are your, uh, your, your drinking buddies. You, you know, you've got, you got those friends, you know, you've got the friends that you go to church with, you got the friends that you, that, that you, you hang out with just kind of here and there, uh, you know, maybe, you know, your fishing buddies and then, and then you got your drinking buddies. The primary purpose between behind getting together with these people is to go drink. And the primary purpose behind going to drink is to get drunk because it makes you feel good. And in order to give up the addiction, in order to give up the, 
the core of the addiction sometimes you have to give up you have to give up the drivers behind it and you have to give up the you have to give up the the the, the people that you're hanging out with in order to get away from it and again speaking from experience there uh, there were there were people that I thought were my friends and when the money ran out when the booze ran out the dope ran out they couldn't be found and in the end what Solomon is stressing here is that in the end both the drunkard and the glutton you're gonna end up pouring. you know I was talking before about you know the money keeps just trickling out when you're you're pouring it in this end or you're smoking it up in this end or you're you're, you're shoving the burgers in the money's trickling out the money to pay the rent the money to pay the power bill the money to pay the gas bill money to pay the phone trust me yeah you know, we all know these things ain't free <laughs> somebody wants paid to have to have this in your pocket and have it work the, the, the lights, they're, they're not free. The internet, it's not free to connect to the internet. So all of those things, they go away. They get absorbed. They get, they get destroyed. <coughs> Excuse me. But they, they, these, these things are all destroyed by your, by that addiction. And, you know, Maybe it's an addiction, and, and again, I'll keep going back here. It's not. I know I'm focusing on on food and and, and alcohol and drugs, but yeah, come on, let's let let let's face it, ladies. How many pairs of shoes do you really need? Maybe your shoes are an addiction. Maybe your purses are. An, how many purses can you carry at one time? Don't answer that. Don't answer that, and don't don't send me hate mail. <laughs> but think about it. I mean, if you if you if you are addicted to something if there if there is something that you just cannot pass up if there is something that you just cannot turn your back on if there's something that you are just that wrapped up with you are addicted to it now it would be okay to be addicted to the lord <laughs> in fact god wants us to be addicted to him you know that's that's where we're supposed to put our our, our focus and our and our and our attention and we we should be addicted to to, to God and we should be addicted to to doing his work and that that would be a positive addiction unfortunately there's an awful lot of us that that, that don't have that and there's uh, there are some uh, there you know, we have we have some uh, uh, some fabulous pastors out there that uh, you know that I would say that, that they have an addiction to sharing God's word, and I'm not going to fault him for that in the least. That's one of those that that's an addiction I wish I had. Uh, you know, I I do what I do, but I wish I ha I wish I had I had more of an addiction to it uh, th that I had more of just a that that raging desire uh, th th that some that some uh, uh, real very famous uh, pastors and preachers have had and and do have today. But again. It's whatever that addiction is, in the long run, the drunkard and the glutton will become poor. And they're sooner or later they're gonna lose everything. And you lose everything and you can you can lose your house, your wife, your your kids, you, you can lose everything. And I, I know I know that you hear what I'm saying, and I know that there are those of you out there that that are that have been there. I know that there are those out there that are in various stages of of either recovery or 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 in the depths of the of the addiction and I pray for you folks and and I pray for pray for those coming up that that, that could easily head that way because of society and and societal pressures and peer pressure. So Let's uh, let's kind of run through, and and this is one of those again. Uh, it's one of those slides that I'm I'm kind of starting to become uh, it's kind of becoming a habit of mine to put these up. Uh, so you know, you can you can pause it, uh, you can make note of these, or come back to them later. You know, zoom back through the uh, through the video. And uh, but here's what the Bible says about gluttony and alcohol. There's uh, in Proverbs. Uh, 
chapter 23 where we're at, uh, verses 1 through 3, 20 to 21, 28, uh, chapter 28, verse 7. Uh, also in Proverbs uh, 29, chapter 23, verses 29 to 35. Again, we're going we're to be there in a few minutes. Uh, in 1 first, first Corinthians and Galatians and Ephesians in the New Testament. Uh, you know, 1 Corinthians, uh, Galatians, Ephesians, these were all written by the Apostle Paul. Uh, he was, a, he was a very well educated, very well trained, and he was, he was uh, the, uh, the, essentially the apostle to the, uh, uh, to the Gentiles. Uh, looking at uh, the physical effects of alcohol, Job in, in Proverbs uh, chapter 20, and uh, what we're going to see here in just a minute in verses, uh, chapter 23, verses 29 to 35. The mental effects of alcohol uh, is, is talked about in, in the book of Hosea. Uh, spiritual effects of alcohol, it, it deadens one's self to God, as it says in Isaiah chapter 5, uh, verses 11 and 12. Um, then there, there's, uh, believe it or not, you know, and, and you, may, you may be surprised by this, but there are examples in the cases of drunkenness in the Bible, in the Old Testament. Um, Noah had a, a drunken experience. Yeah, he did. Noah, believe, think about it. Um, Lot, you know, Lot, again, man of God, he, there was a, a drunkenness there. Uh, in 1 Samuel, we, we read a bit about Nabal. And, uh, and, and in 2 Samuel, uh, Uriah, uh, Ella, the king of Israel in 1 Kings, and, and Ben-Hadad in for, also in 1 Kings. Uh, these are all tales of, 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 uh, of drunkenness of, and, and the effects and, and what happened around. And I would encourage you, even though each one of those, those references is, is very brief, uh, you know, read, read the verses leading into it and the verses leading after it. And what you're going to see is the setup of the situation. And then you get into the situation and you see the result of that situation. Then there's also the alternative to drunkenness. And Ephesians 5.18 says that to replace being drunken, uh, drunken with, with wine or, or alcohol, to be filled with the, the Holy Spirit. And Guys, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not going off toward the, uh, uh, toward the, the end of the spectrum, toward, uh, uh, toward some of the uh, uh, Holy Spirit filled and uh, uh, you know, some of the over the top uh, religious uh, denominations. Uh, but you can, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit and be, be happy and having a good time. And, and you know, if you're, you're, you're hanging out with, with friends at church and I've got a, I've got a very dear friend that uh, uh, had a, we had a situation once and uh, he didn't, he didn't want to be around uh, the folks at church because, uh, uh, because of, uh, he had been out drinking and, uh, it was early in his Christian walk, and he was start. He was struggling, and uh, I told him, "Say, hey, you know, come on, you know, to, come be with us. And instead of going drinking, come be with us." And he did, and and it turned out to be the, one of the one of the greatest experiences of his of, of his young Christian life. Uh, and I, and I've I've experienced that that as well. You know, somebody reaching out and saying, "Hey, you know, come come do this with us instead." And uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, and of course, you know, God gave us our bodies and he wants, uh, and wants us to honor him with our bodies. That's in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, uh, talking again about uh, uh, the overeating and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and overindulgence and, and such. Uh, so moving along, we, we, we're going to move to, and I, I've been I keep promising you that we're going to go to uh, chapter 23, verses 29 to 32, and, and we're there. Uh, this is the portrait of, uh, of, of the, the alcoholic. And I, I've never read anything toward proof of this, um, but I will, 
I will posit the the concept that when this was written, this was written by an individual who's been there. Not somebody that's watched it, not somebody that's just spouting something uh, or, or saying, well, saying what they think is the end. This is written. I'm telling you, it was written from in, in the, with the perspective and the understanding of somebody that's been there, done it, lived it, suffered it, and gotten out the other side. So let's start with verse 29. Verse 29 says, Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has conflicts? Who has complaints? Who has wounds for no reason? Who has red eyes? Now, I'm going I'm to stop there for a second. They, they, where's he going? Woe, sorrow, conflict, complaint. Who has wound? Have you ever... <laughs> Have you ever been out on a bender and you got up in the morning and had no idea where the bruises came from? Hmm? Have you ever have you ever been have you ever been in one of those situations where you 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 overindulged in anything and and later you look at it and say, What? And then he says in, in verse 30, those who linger over wine, those who go looking for mixed wine, don't gaze at wine because it's red, because it gleams in the cup and goes down smoothly. It's like, and then he compares it, it says, in the end, it bites like a snake and stings like a viper. Now, you got to understand, most, most of us think snake, viper, yeah, okay. Same thing, snake, viper. But it's this, there, there's this, this snake that bites. And it, there he's referring to, uh, to, 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 he's comparing it to a snake that it causes, it has a painful bite. But then he says it stings like a viper. Because there, there's a difference in a non poisonous and poisonous. A non poisonous snake will hurt when it bites you. But a viper, the viper that he's referring to is a poisonous snake that will kill you within minutes. So, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has conflicts? Who has wounds for no reason and red eyes? Those who linger over the wine. Those who go looking for mixed wine. You know, it's, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that, that paints a picture and again, I'll, I'll say it again. I, I have no, I have no, uh, no theological proof. I have no, no evidentiary proof that that Solomon was ever was ever uh, was ever a drunk. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he sure is describing a drunk like you know, like one that's been there. You know. So, and you know, and the question is again, and and I, I talked about this at the outset with the, uh, you know, why is drinking so enticing and, and how does how does it it uh, how does alcohol mimic or how does it compare with a snake you know it's like I said before it sneaks up on you it you you're not even noticing you don't even notice as you're you know, you're drinking and you're drinking and you're drinking and you just you know you're having a good time and you know you just think you're having a good time and then all of a sudden you're you know you're doing one of these and you're it's like okay where's where's my keys I got to go home and that's where the snake bites and the vape and the viper stings because that's where you know you're you, now, now you're going to go out on the road and you're going to drive and you're going to uh, you know you may be able to you may be you may be like me you may be able to you may really have a high tolerance for uh, for alcohol and uh, you may be able to uh, uh Maybe able to drive with some some sense of reason. Your skills are there, and you can kind of you know. And usually, usually the case is though you think your skills are a whole lot better than they really are. And that's when you end up you know you end up you know, put your car in a ditch, uh, you know, wrap it around a telephone pole. Hopefully you survive. Hopefully you don't run into a 
uh, station or a minivan with some soccer mom coming home coming home with a carload of kids yeah that's a, that's the stinging viper you know it's not just you know what can it do to you but what can what can your uh, what can your addiction what can your uh, lack of care for other people what can that do in the world and you know, here Solomon is 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 painting the painting a picture and I, and I and I hope I'm painting an even grislier picture for you and I won't apologize if you're offended by it I'm sorry turn the video off because it's it's true and I I share nothing but truth you know I, I preach I preach the word as, as you know I uh, I use this as a guide we do this we do these Sunday school lessons and I, uh, I I I know I get on rants and I get on tirades and I preach more than uh, in, in addition to just teaching the material here but it's the Bible it's the Word of God and it's true and it's and it's infallible so we'll move on to another slide here in the last couple of verses says your eyes will see strange things and you will say absurd things you'll be like someone sleeping out at sea or lying down on the top of the ship's mast they struck me but i felt no pain they beat me but i didn't know it when will i wake up i'll look for another drink again still he's it's you know it's somebody that's been there uh, he, he, he's got an understanding of you know that uh, you know seeing strange things and, and saying absurd you know they start babbling and you know say am, am, am I am I slurring my speech <laughs> I don't think I'm slurring my speech I think I'm, I'm speaking just fine you know and everybody around just looking at you like oh man he is he is he's plastered and your your eyes will see strange things it's it's that's one of those until you've until you <laughs> until you've really been down that path, and uh, you know the old joke about pink elephants. You know, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and and the you know they the, they struck me, but I feel no pain. It's like it's like I'm oblivious. I'm you know, and that that's when that that, that that's when that's when the uh, the attic becomes really really dangerous is when it becomes bulletproof like <laughs> go ahead do it i can take it they're they at that point they become a danger to themselves and they, they and, and a danger to everybody else and you know they then they beat me but i didn't know it. say like, yeah you get up in the morning and you got up you got two black eyes and a, and your side hurts and you got got a cracked rib and because you were in a bar brawl and you don't even remember it but then again you know in the in the, in the middle of the night you wake up with the aches and pains and you know er, early hours of the morning it's like oh man oh that hurts oh you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go get a drink that'll make me feel better right okay so trust me it's not gonna in the long run it may it may make you feel better short term but in the long run it's not gonna make you feel better so I have I've reached the end of the uh, of, of this uh, of this lesson and uh, you know Solomon's d description it, it, of the, the person and the the effects and the and the dangers and and the answer is to give control of ourselves solely to the Lord, and you know, and and if you're if you're in this if you're in this situation, I would encourage you seek help. Um, whether it's in your church, if you if you don't if you don't want to reach out to to your church, if you don't want to reach out to your friends reach out reach out to one of the many uh substance abuse programs you can keep it as confidential as as you need but seek help and seek the lord because 
those programs are wonderful, and, I, and I'm not going to I'm not going to down them at all. I know I know a lot of people that have been through a lot of a lot of those ki- kind of programs and very successfully. But what it really comes down to is seek the Lord first and foremost and always. Seek that help, but seek the help of the Lord. Because when you're trying to give these things up on your own, you are going to struggle. You're going to fight. You're going to, it's just, you can't do it. But when you seek the Lord, he's going to, he's going to touch your heart. He's going to touch your mind. And and he's going to ease that. And you will be able to be successful and you will be able to 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 turn away from it and you'll and you'll be able to focus on 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 the holy spirit in your life and and you'll be able to focus on your relationship with god you'll be able to focus on your relationship with your families and your loved ones your friends your true friends not your not your drinking buddies i'm sorry but drinking buddies they're highly overrated they really are because Usually a drinking buddy's just going to get you in trouble. All right, well, we, we've gone very long with this session. And I, I, I will leave you with a, a, a few closing thoughts. That the believers are to fear God alone, finding their security and their hope in Him. When, when you're depressed, when, you're, when you feel like you need a drink, instead turn to your Bible. Read, read Scripture. Believers are to associate with those pursuing a godly lifestyle. Turn your back on the drinking buddies. Hang out with the church friends. Hang out with the scripture with the scripture friends. Find a group. I've got to. I've, I've got this. I've got to share this one quick little story. Those of you that may watch this, that you know who you are. I've got. I've got this little text group. There. Uh, there's there there there's just uh, just a handful of us. And uh, I dearly love these men, and it's something that, uh, that that we started on a kind of on a challenge or a, almost a dare, but a, but a challenge uh, uh, a couple of years ago. I don't know, maybe two and a half, three years ago, something like that. Uh, of of just you know, spending five minutes every morning in the Bible, and uh, we you know we we we. You know, we would talk about our struggles and you know, this kind of thing. So we started doing this little texting thing. And uh, once a day, I would send a, 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 a scripture text. And, uh, you know, we would we would text back and forth, you know, how's your day going? Or, hey, guys, you know, I got this problem, that problem, or the other. And, uh, but, again, there, and, and there's just five of us. And we're, we're, we are very close. And we, we share things with each other. And uh, when we have struggles, we we share. Find a group like that. Find somebody that you can do that with. That you can you can basically at, at a drop of a hat you say, "Hey, man, I need I need prayer for this." And you know, it's, maybe it could be it can be a text prayer, or it could be, "Hey, you know, I need prayer." Support each other. Lift each other up. Help. Help pull that other person up and pull them help pull them out of whatever that 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 uh, that situation that addiction looks like and and help each other pursue that lifestyle also the you know the initial allure of intoxicating drink is is replaced by uh, in the end by by abuse and heartaches and you know, it starts with headaches and ends with heartache when, when you lose everything. And addiction leads to, to perpetual danger and disaster. Heavenly Father, we come to you again this, today. We thank you for blessing of your word for the lessons that we've learned father i pray for each and every one out there that might be in in the throes of addiction i pray for those that might be on the on the the edge 
the verge, just heading into addiction. I pray for those that are in it, and I pray for those who are in recovery. Father, that whatever that addiction is, whether it's drugs, alcohol, food, shoes, purses, whatever, Father, I just pray that you would you would touch their hearts and minds. Father, send someone into their life to to minister to them and to help them rise above that addiction and, and see that that by focusing on you and accepting your Holy Spirit into their life, that they can turn their back on that addiction and that they can turn their face toward you in turning their back on the addiction. They, they turn and face you, Father, and accept you and they accept the blessings that, that come from, from focusing on you. For it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. Good night. Thank you, and we hope that you will uh, that you'll decide to join us again next week. Mm -hmm.